Hey guys, today we are going to be recreating this exact animation from scratch in Blender. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, so here's my final project file. As you can see, there's a lot going on here. We've got three different lights set up here. we got one in the middle. We've got our object. We've got a plane and a camera. And there's a lot going on here, but I promise you I'm going to break it down into steps so that we can achieve that animation. Alright guys, I got a new file open here. And as you can see, we have our default cube. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to add a plane, mesh plane, scale it up to eight times that size. I just did S8 to do that. Now we have our plane here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add any object I want. This is the object that's going to float. For now, I'm going to do an icosphere because that's what I had in the last tutorial. So I got my icosphere right here. I'm just going to click on my transform tools, bring it up a little bit, and there you have the icosphere. So that's the start of that. Now what we're going to do is make this thing float. All right, so we want to make this thing float. So how do we do that? Let's go to our starting keyframe down here at the bottom. So we're on frame zero. I'm going to do I as an insert location. I'm going to move probably 30 frames ahead. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. You can move it to whatever value you want, as high as you want it to float. And I'm going to insert another keyframe for the location. And now I'm going to actually go back to this initial zero frame, right click, duplicate duplicate that exact location that we had for before and copy it to the 60th frame. So now if we play this back, you see we kind of have a floating animation, right? Now we're gonna make that a little bit smoother. All right guys, so I like where our animation's at right now, but I wanna make it a little bit smoother. How do we do that? I am going to go back to the zeroth frame again. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go to graph editor. So now you can see we kind of have these, these keyframes in here, right? So we're gonna highlight these keyframes all three of them. Right click, go to interpolation mode and Bezier. So now what we can do is we have the ability to actually adjust these keyframes however we want. So now you can make this animation much smoother and actually look like it's floating. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on any one of these keyframes and you can actually adjust the curvature of the way they move. So I'll just show you an example. If we were to do something like this and play it back, you can see that the timing completely changed because this curve here where there those keep between those keyframes is actually changing so much that we have a, a very sudden drop which is this little drop right here I'm gonna commit uh, control Z that so we undo that now what I did in my animation is I kinda messed around with these keyframes until I got it to somewhere that I liked that I thought looked realistic so I believe what I did was I selected this keyframe and kinda just pulled the edges out a little bit more both sides to kind of ease into that. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Now as you can tell, it kind of looks pretty good already. You can mess around with this as much as you want. I think that works for our animation here. As you can see, it goes towards the top and towards the top it kind of almost hovers a little bit, which is the effect we're going for. And then it just falls back down. And yeah, you can mess with these keyframes at the end here too if you want, but I think this works for what, what we have so far. Now I'm gonna go back into my dope sheet over here and I'm gonna copy these keyframes. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate them and move them over this way. So now if I play this back, it should hover twice. Yep, just like that. So now, like I said, you can mess with these keyframes as much as you want. For now, we're just gonna go with that. Now, if you saw in my previous animation, we're actually gonna also rotate this. So let's go back to the zeroth frame right click and insert, I'm sorry, I insert rotation. So now we have a rotational keyframe right there. I'm gonna move all the way to frame 60 and we're gonna go ahead and rotate this on the Z axis. I'll do 180. So we'll go ahead and insert that keyframe, rotation. Now, if I play this back, you'll see it rotates 180 degrees before it gets back to the starting point. But you can see it doesn't do it right here, so you'll need to copy those keyframes to uh, 60 through 120 as well. All right, guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our 120th frame, and since that is the final part of the animation and it'll loop back around to the exact same point, we're gonna go in here to our side panel and go to our scene, and the end frame, we're gonna set that to 120 and press enter. And now if you play it back, it should do a full loop and end up exactly where it was to start with. Yep. And there you go. So it's seamless loop and it should end up exactly where it was. Yep, there you go. That's how you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the animation tab. 
Now this is what I really enjoy because now it's a lot easier for me to see my scene here from my camera view and my actual layout with all my shapes and everything in it that I have. So what we're going to do now is we are going to turn this into a wireframe so that we can make it look exactly like the one in my previous animation. So go ahead and select that icosphere, go into our modifiers tab here, add a modifier, wireframe modifier. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. It's already where we want it. Now you can adjust all these parameters yourself, such as the thickness of the actual wireframe. As you can see, I can turn that up or down. I like somewhere 0 0.02. I think that looks fine. That's what I did in my previous animation. And you can go ahead and click this little drop down arrow over here and click apply if you want. You don't have to, but most people do that so that it's a, a finalized shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And there you have our little Icosphere wireframe. So you can do this to any shape. I'll just show you an example with a cube real quick so that you understand. So you have our cube right here and pretty much anything with a side or a face to it, you're able to do this to. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up. I'm gonna move it over here as an example. And we're gonna go to our modifiers tab again, wireframe. And as you can see, now we have a wireframe of this cube. And I can increase the thickness if I want. I'm not sure if there's a limit here. Looks like there isn't. So you can pretty much do this to any shape and then you can finalize it by applying it and now you have a, uh, a cube with a wireframe around it. Pretty cool, right? So you can do that to almost anything, like I said. So I'm just using the Icosphere in this example because that's the one in my previous animation. Alright guys, so I'm going to go into the side pane here. I'm going to have my camera selected and here's all those little attributes about the camera. And I'm going to go ahead to the orthographic perspective, okay? And I am going to zoom in on that cube, right? I'm going to raise the camera up and you can pretty much set this up however you want. You don't have to use an orthographic perspective, but that's what I did in my last animation and I thought it looked pretty cool. And then you're going to go up to the scene tab and you can adjust your parameters here as well. Now this is a 1920 by 1080 pixels. I usually go with a square because I'll be posting to Instagram. So I'm just going to make this 1080 by 1080. So now you can see we have a square and a couple things are actually uh, clipping the edges here. So I'm gonna go back into my camera and just zoom into my Icosphere a little bit more. Um, now, if you really want this to be true orthographic perspective, you can go ahead and set the uh, Z rotation to 45. You can set the, I believe it's 52.7 degrees for the, um, the X rotation, 52.7, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's like the actual perspective that you get um, for an isometric perspective, I'm sorry, not orthographic. So here we go, we have our scene set up here and now we're gonna go ahead and start adding some lights. So before we start adding lights, actually we're gonna go into our world settings right here and click on the color and just bring that all the way down to a solid black so that we have no, um, no chance of any uh, light coming in from the sides there. Now there's a default light here in the uh, first Blender file you open, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So as you can see, we can't see anything, which is good because we know we have no lights. So we're gonna go ahead and add our own lights. I'm gonna go to add light area light. And I'm gonna bring that up here. There we go. As you can see, we're starting to shed some light onto the scene. I am gonna make, I'm gonna scale this up. I'm gonna go into its properties here and I'm gonna make, it's already a square. So I'm gonna make it four, four meters across. Now, this is the part where you have some creative freedom here. You already have the light pointing down, which is what we want. All of our light sources are directly pointing down by default, which is perfect for our scene. So right now, the power is only 10 watts, and I'm gonna go ahead and raise that to 4,000. Uh, as you can see, that's pretty darn bright. Not really what we want. So you can adjust this as needed. Let's go ahead. Now, the other reason is there's no materials applied to anything, so everything's gonna seem very blow blown out right here. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up three lights back here and I'll come back when I'm done All right guys, as you can see I have three lights set up here. I'm gonna go through each one. Don't worry We've got our first light at a thousand watts These are both side lights at both at a thousand watts and I have my blue color here and my purple color here And in the middle I actually just did kind of a mix of the two so I did like a blue and purple mix um, I don't even know what you would call that color But I put that at 600 watts to give everything like a nice mix as you can see This is not gonna be the final result because we have no materials applied yet but what I'm gonna do before we do anything else is I'm actually gonna scale this up, this plane here, just a little bit more so we make sure nothing gets cut off in the camera's view. And I'm actually gonna go to that plane and I am going to make sure that we cannot select it anymore. So I'm gonna click this little icon here. Now we can't select it anymore so that when we're moving stuff around, we don't have to worry about that. So 
let's go ahead and get into our materials. So for the plain material itself, I'm not gonna actually show you how to make that because I followed a different tutorial to make that, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and I will copy the link in the description. Um, but here is the plane from my other project. I'm gonna move that out of here. Well, once you import anything into the project, if it had a material applied to it previously, it should pop up in the uh, materials tab. So I'm gonna click on the plane that we created. I'm gonna make that selectable again, right? And I'm gonna go into this little material tab and click on metal. And as you can see, that material applied to our um, our plane there. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that plane's unselectable anymore. So that's the material for the plane. Now let's go ahead and make this icosphere glow. I'm gonna zoom in on the icosphere here. I'm gonna click on it. Now, as you can see, there's no material applied yet. Go back into our scene settings up here and instead of render engine Eevee, we're gonna go ahead and click on that and make it cycles because we're gonna actually make this glow in cycles. Eevee has built-in bloom, cycles does not yet. So we're gonna create a little effect in the uh, compositor um, uh, on the psychosphere. But let's go into the materials tab here, click on new material and on surface, we're gonna click on that and make that a emission material. Now for the strength, I'm gonna start out at probably 10, just to see what that looks like. So as you can see, you can see the glow effect in the reflection here on the metal, right? But we're actually gonna make the edges of this glow in the final render. Uh, just a quick side note before I actually do that, I'm gonna go ahead and select these three lights and actually move them back. As you can see, because of the isometric perspective, we actually are having uh, different lighting here. So we have to move this back further than you think you do because of the perspective of the camera. So you can move that to wherever you like. It's really personal preference. I sort of like it right about there. And I think that purple is a little bit too intense in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down to 200. I think that looks pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and play back what we have real quick. Looks pretty cool, right? Now I won't be able to play that in rendered view. It'll be very slow if I do, because it's not rendered out yet, but we're getting something cool here. So let's go ahead and make this icosphere glow. Okay guys, let's go ahead and add that glare now. So I'm not gonna have anything selected. I'm gonna go into compositing here, click on use nodes. You should see something like this here. I'm gonna go to add glare, click on that, add it. And I'm gonna move these lines around like such. You'll see what I mean in a second. So the image output of the rendered file will go into the image input of the glare and the image output of the glare will go into the image input of the composite. So basically what this is gonna do is actually apply a slight glare to our uh, emission materials. So I'm going to go into here where it says streaks and go to fog glow. And this is where you can kind of mess around with it and do whatever you think looks best. So let's go ahead and render render this and see what it's going to look like. I'm going to go to render image. Okay guys, as you can see here, the image is almost done rendering. Now, don't panic if you don't see a glow at first because this is actually an effect that is applied after the render is complete. So it'll apply this glow effect in a second here. And there you go. So obviously that's a little bit too bright, so I'll probably tone that down. Um, and remember, you have to have your emission shader has to be on decently high, so like 10 for the actual material itself. Um, and as for this, you can kind of adjust this as needed. That pretty much wraps up the tutorial. Um, if you re go ahead and render this out, you're going to get a very, very similar scene to what I have uh, that I post on Instagram. Um, you can mess around with these lights as much as you want, obviously. There's pretty much creative freedom all around. Uh, the only thing that there's not creative freedom around is pretty much that wireframe uh, structure, uh, unless you want to recreate that from scratch. So I'm gonna go in ahead and show you what I did with my sampling here. I actually had my sampling at 100 and everything turned out pretty fine. I actually. And I should have had GPU on here, but anyway, I do my GPU compute cycles, supported feature set. Um, you can go into the light paths here. I have everything set pretty low. Like I'll set transmission. Could it really be at three? You don't really need transmission at all for this. These can all be at three or four, whatever you prefer. Obviously, the higher they are, the longer the render is going to take. So I'll go ahead and render this out right now. Uh, let me go into my performance tab. I will do auto detect. We'll do 512. 5512. Oops, 512. Let's go ahead and render that, see how long that takes. Should not take that long. It's anticipating 42 seconds or so. Taking a little longer than expected, actually. But you get the idea. So that's only 100 samples, and it looks pretty good. All right, guys, that wraps up this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps you in some way. If you're confused, go ahead and leave a comment, and I'll try to get back to you and help you out with your project. See you later.